there's a pathogen out there that has turned wolves into pack leaders and could make you into an alpha. But I'm not referring to the outdated term for a parent wolf here, no, it's, uh, it literally makes you into an alpha. Yeah, that kind of alpha. <laughs> Welcome back to the Dark Wolf Project. This is Toxoplasma gondii. Like plants, animals, and humans, it's eukaryotic, possessing a nucleus. But here the similarities end. Toxoplasma are protozoans, single-celled life forms in the same phylogenetic grouping as amoeba. Now, many protists are free-living in both terrestrial and marine habitats, but some, such as Toxoplasma gondii, are parasitic in nature. Although many animal species can play intermediate host to the organism, the only definitive host where it can reproduce sexually is in cats, and its typical life cycle is between cats and rodents. Infected cats shed oocysts, basically infectious embryos, in their feces, which are quickly able to infect other animals that come into contact with them, and help spread the parasite to new hosts. But when a rodent becomes infected through contact, an unusual trait of Toxoplasma gondii becomes apparent. The host's inborn fear of cat odour is replaced by an attraction, while at the same time its reaction times, alertness, and vigilance are also compromised. This makes mice and rats infected with Toxoplasma gondii far more likely to fall prey to cats a pretty neat strategy to increase their chances of success in reaching a new definitive host and being able to reproduce sexually again. It also gives the parasite potential to impact entire ecosystems because its brain-altering traits aren't just limited to rodents. Any warm-blooded species can become infected, yet not cater fully to the microbe's needs. These are the intermediate hosts. Obviously, this host's newfound attraction to cat pee is less directly successful than with rodents, but their altered brain chemistry seems to have far wider reaching consequences. Toxoplasmosis, the disease caused by infection in intermediate hosts, is generally asymptomatic, except for some very specific hormonal changes which in turn increase risk-taking behaviour in the animal. While suppressing fear in rodents gets them eaten, doing the same to other animals has very different results. This is where our wolves come into the equation. As a keystone species with a strong social aspect, changes in their behaviour resulting from toxoplasmosis could be amplified enough to affect the wolves' social structure and ecology. This kind of data would take decades to collect, but fortunately there's a population of wolves already exposed to the pathogen who have been closely studied for long enough to provide us with this data. In 2022, a group of researchers published their study of 26 years worth of data from Yellowstone National Park, which included wolf population dynamics, predator-prey relationships, pathogens and genetics, all of which combined to produce an insight into just how toxoplasmosis had influenced the pack's behaviours. The results showed that firstly, serology, that's the study of blood serum where antibodies, a sign of past infection, are found, confirmed that both cougars, the definitive host, and wolves, an intermediate host, had both been exposed to Toxoplasma gondii as early as 2000. Different wolves were found to have varying degrees of prevalence of the disease, and by analysing records of where reckless or bold behaviour consistent with toxoplasmosis occurred, it was discovered that wolves who dispersed from, or went on to lead their own packs, had nearly double the seroprevalence of antibodies associated with Toxoplasma gondii as non-dispersers. 
The parasites seem to be helping wolf packs carve out new territories by making them take more risks. And this, the researchers predicted, could be the cause of a positive feedback loop. If infected wolves were leading their packs into riskier situations, such as encroaching on cougar territory, then it was possible that the parasite was using the wolves to increase cougar infection. So, why isn't every single wolf and cougar in the park infected already? Well, the researchers point out that the proposed feedback loop is likely moderated by evolutionary limiters. Acute toxoplasmosis often results in unsuccessful pregnancies, and the increased risk-taking among wolves often tends towards increased mortality. So, there would always be a high chance that uninfected wolves would survive. The study demonstrates there may well be another layer of complexity to ecological interactions between populations of wild animals, courtesy of a personality-altering parasite, and it may help explain some of our own behaviours as well. Now, as I mentioned earlier, toxoplasma can infect any warm-blooded animal, and that includes humans. Up to a third of the developed world may have become infected with toxoplasmosis, but it very rarely causes us harm, so you can put your phone down and stop panicking. An infected human can experience delayed reaction times and a lessened self-preservation tendency, in addition to finding the smell of cat urine weirdly pleasant. I wish I was making this up. More seriously, it also increases the risk of schizophrenia in individuals already predisposed to the disease. Whether or not an increased tendency for risk-taking and a lowered sense of self-preservation have the same reproductive advantage for humans as they do in other species, well, we'll just have to hope that the same evolutionary limiters are in place for us. I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And if you want to go further and help the recovery and monitoring of wild wolf populations, please check out my Etsy shop linked down in the description where you can find merch that will help these causes directly.